We are Lumen and we build leaders and teams while training in continuous innovation. And today I'm here with Tirza, the CEO of Lumen and Maya, the COO of Lumen. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Great to be here as always. And my name is Kat um, and I'd like to introduce to you our topic today, which is how do we open dialogue with our teammates during these wild and crazy times of unrest when there's a lot of opinions flying around and a lot of difficult things to talk about? How do we have that conversation um, while keeping everybody feeling safe uh, enough to be vulnerable? Um, how do you talk to your team? You know, um, and I think that the way that you look at the world, the mindset, you know, the the lens through which you look at everything. And those behaviors that you display as a result can really keep you from connecting to the people that you see and spend time with day on a daily basis. So we want to talk today about what kind of mindsets will allow that for that connection and allow for um, everyone to feel heard and safe in having these really difficult conversations. So Mai, I'm going to turn it over to you to get us started. Yes, thank you, Kat. And uh, one of the places I wanted to start with is actually from a historic perspective and to bring in a framing uh, that looks at what are we not okay with? Um, and this is, as a civil society, we have these uh, social contracts between all of, our, all, all of us, whether we are walking down the street or are in organizations. And when those get uh, broken what happens and what do we what are we okay with and what are we not okay with and the framing for that uh, that I'm going to bring today is by the historian uh, Karl Popper and this is uh, called the paradox of, of tolerance and the paradox of toler tolerance says that unlimited tolerance must lead to the disappearance of tolerance if we extend unlimited tolerance even to those that are intolerant if we are not prepared to defend a tolerant society against the onslaught of the intolerant, that the tolerant will be destroyed and tolerance with them. So that's the paradox. So basically saying, if we are tolerant of the intolerant, we're gonna lose our society. So as companies, how do we actually hold to that? Well, A, companies have regulations, uh, agreements, bylaws, ways of, of doing business and ways of, of actually working within the organization. So when a company wants to sit down with um, their people and actually have the conversation, uh, we actually brought in um, a wonderful art article from uh, HBR about how to talk with your team about the violence um, that it just happened. So we are gonna link to that um, article. And, and they view it from a few places. A, um, you know, the political views might, uh, you know, be very different, but there are certain things that the company uh, will have and will stand by, whether in company by itself, if it's a private company, of course, it has regulations of how people need to behave, but also as a civil society, what are we okay with? What are we not okay with? Um, and also understanding that every part of your team team member might have their different context and they might be very triggered by, by what's been going on, by even just the stress of, you know, we've been in COVID at this point for over a year. Uh, so we need to also understand the context from each from where each of our team members show up. And just a very uh, quick kind of summary of their recommendation is they look at a few steps of how to work with your team. And that is creating the space. So creating a safe space for people to actually arrive, uh, acknowledging the time that we're in, affirming uh, that that means affirming that the company is here, you're in a safe space, we are gonna actually uh, not tolerate intolerance in our place of work, personalize, tell your own personal story, offer support to the extent that the company can offer and you as, as a leader can offer support, um, reinforce values. And that is coming back to what do, not, not only what are we against, but what are we for? Respect, uh, respectfulness, accountability, uh, inclusion, diversity, equity, things like that are great values and, and great principles to actually remind and reinforce. And then highlight resources. Um, not, you are not expected as a leader to have all the answers, but actually gathering some resources and supporting your team in finding resources of where they can get help or support or even listening more or even just educating themselves is definitely a great uh, step to take. 
Uh, so this is a little bit of a, you know what we wanted to bring for you today around um, kind of the broader perspective of global historical uh, concepts. So the paradox of intolerance is from 1945 and into what are the big publications. And then now we're gonna ground it into how we at Lumen see it uh, with our framework. So Tirza, I'm gonna hand it over to you to continue. Thanks, Maya. So there's um, a phrase that's getting um, tossed around quite a bit that we have our own approach to here at Lumen and that's hold accountable. So um, we take that as um, a phrase with two words. And oftentimes um, we think of accountable as just the counting part. Um, did this happen? Did this not happen? If it didn't happen, were there consequences? But there's the other piece of um, hold accountable and that's hold. And when we're coming into conversations um, and times like these um, with our teams, it's vital that we look at both parts of, um, of the term and what it means to hold accountable on our teams. And so we divide hold accountable into um, seven capacities really. And the first is um, focusing out, putting the attention on others. So as a leader, when you're opening up these conversations, um, making sure you're not coming to the conversation with a need to unburden yourself, you need to do that elsewhere. Um, so that you're ready to actually focus on your team and um, create the space for them. Um, finally, um, the next thing is really creating uh, a safe space. We talk about psychological safety. And so that is um, putting some boundary on the conversation. We're gonna be here for this long. We're gonna let each person speak. Um, we are gonna allow people to evolve and change their minds. So whatever is said in this room is maybe what's said in this room. And we're gonna allow people to actually evolve and have a different experience or opinion at another time. Creating purpose of any activity is key to, to any kind of accountability. So we need to know what we're doing and why we're doing if, if we're gonna actually create accountability. So why are we coming together? Why are we here as a team? What do we stand for? What are we here to accomplish? And in any conversation um, in the workplace, our purpose of coming together is so that we can um, further our culture, so that we can further our work. So staying um, connected to the customer that you're serving, um, whether they're internal and or external, and reminding the team that this is our purpose, this is who we're here to serve. So um, we need clarity and constraints. And so whether you're handling this in the conversation or you're handling this in, in broad, more broadly within the organization, we need to know what's in, in and what's out. And um, intolerance is out. We have a lot of conversation about what harassment is and how that's out. Um, but finding a way to create clear, clarity around the boundaries of what's acceptable behavior inside the organization um, and what simply is not. Uh, and then different organizations handle what people managing their personal lives differently. Um, authenticity. So Maya um, pulled in this reference from the um, Harvard Business Review article um, about like speaking about your personal experience. And so authenticity is just um, being able to speak authentically about one's own experience. And so I've you know, shared with my teams um, what it means for somebody whose people have fled intolerance and have fled persecution um, to be in, to see memes and to see these phrases brought back and then brought into um, the halls of government. And so I speak from my personal situation. And by doing that, I'm vulnerable. Um, and that vulnerability creates the space for other people to be vulnerable. We need to have agreements. And so agreements really are what creates the opportunity for true accountability. As we're going into any conversation, clarifying our agreements ahead of time allows us to create that safe space, but also to decide what's fair game. What are we really gonna talk about here? Opening up in a free for all is not actually the best way to create a psychologically safe space or create a sense of completion and closure in a conversation. Um, and finally, a key piece of, of held accountable is that feedback, clearing, acknowledgement and what we might um, look at as feed forward or how we can do things differently in the future. 
Um, and so having a moment in any conversation where you as a leader at least acknowledge your folks for showing up and take feed forward about how you as a leader might hold these conversations more effectively going forward also allows people to talk about what could have been done better in the conversation without making it um, you know, about personalizing or, or challenging what happened in the room. Uh, so um, again, we'll post these. I hope those are useful, a useful way to create some boundary around conversation while opening up space for people to feel heard, seen, and valued um, in these challenging times. Kat? Thanks, Tirza. Um, and what's coming up for me now hearing both of you speak is that one thing that teams can do now um, to really create this safe space and this open dialogue is to create a format to get together all together in the same Zoom room and say, look, we want to make sure that our teammates are, are being heard and that, that, you know, our emotional landscape can really have its full expression so that we can focus on what's important to us uh, and not be held back by, by not being able to express ourselves fully. So this is, I think this is a really good time to have some format for these types of dialogues that, as Tirza said, you know, has a time agreements and a specific structure and, you know, the do's and don'ts um, uh, that, that I think that could be something that's really useful. So I want to talk about that just a little bit um, and, and give folks an opportunity to really um, try something this week to go out and talk to your teammates. I think two of the most impactful phrases that we could say are help and how are you help being you know i don't know how to have these conversations i don't you know leaders going to your team saying i want to be the kind of leader that inspires my team to bring their full selves to work but i don't know how to do that i don't have a lot of most of us don't have training to do so so really coming to your team and saying, help, how can we do this together and creating that format? And then just, how are you? I recently saw a great social media post by the company, The Female Lead, and they were reposting a Twitter, um, a, a tweet by Claire Willett, who said that her boss just called her and asked her, how, is, how are you? And reflex, reflexively, she said, I'm fine which is what most of us are gonna say. And her boss was like, nope, start over because I'm not fine and you're not fine and nobody's fine. There's a lot going on in the world right now. Let's have a real conversation here. How are you? Let's try this again. And she said, you know what? I'm super terrible. <laughs> and, and her boss was like, great, me too. I'm actually having a really hard time, right? And so asking that question, how are you? You may have to do it more than once. And the other thing is to be available for the answer. We all have opinions about what's going on. We all have, you know, we're all triggered in various ways. There's no right or wrong way to be triggered. However, when, when you ask someone, how are you? And they give you a real answer, it may, it, it may have an impact on you that is uncomfortable. And so I want to offer here that this is an opportunity to, when you check in with your people, to, to hold back your reactions because the, the purpose of creating space is to allow other people to fill it, right? It's not about bringing in your own, you know, who's right and who's wrong. It's about giving a space for self-expression so that, like I said, we can move on with our lives and we can find what's important to us and we can continue to live our lives from a place of knowing where we're headed. Um, and so I, I want to bring it back to Tirza to help close us out um, uh, and, and thank both of you for being in dialogue with me about this. And I've already learned some a few things myself um, in here. So thank you. Tirza. Now, as um, leaders, we are often faced with um, teams who, with a diversity of viewpoints, and we may have team members that are bringing um, intolerance or views that you, as a as a leader, may or may not like agree with. And, like Kat said, you can um, reserve your reaction, and we can be tolerant of 
people bringing intolerant views while being intolerant of intolerance. And that kind of sucks. Like that, it doesn't feel good necessarily. It does require a developmental progression and a growing as a leader to find the space um, for people to come to conclusions based on their history, based on their biology, um, based on the information worlds that they've been swimming in that are different than yours. And we can be intolerant of intolerance while creating space for um, all of our team members to feel heard. So um, good luck out there. Um, this is a challenging time to be a leader. Um, we're gonna post our resources below. We are here for you. Um, and um, we welcome your comments and we welcome you reaching out. Um, take care everyone.